When it comes to building complex software, only one thing's certain, some sort of failure is going to occur. In this series, we're going to explore exactly that question. When dreaded failure does occur, how do you act quickly and actually fix these problems in the first place? This is Site Unreliability Engineering. Nowadays, we have more choices than ever about the tools, platforms, frameworks, and languages we use to build software. That's generally a good thing, but it also means that we can often overcomplicate things and make things really difficult to understand. Consider a simple cat sharing photo application. But in this case, we've decided to make the cat photos immutable and put them on a public blockchain. For our immutable cat photo application, we've also decided to roll it out in a global scale immediately. So naturally, we put it on a federated Kubernetes cluster in about half a dozen cloud regions all around the world. On top of that, because someone asked for it, we've decided to make these cat photos shareable using IoT edge devices that are plugged in somewhere. With all these things together, we've created an architecture that's very complex, but also difficult to understand. Even if you're not building a next generation blockchain based cat photo sharing application, one thing that's very true is as systems become more complex, the way you understand the system is often different from people on your team and the other people that are working on the system in the first place. The tools, frameworks, languages, and processes that power them are also constantly changing. Even if you're at an expert level or a senior architect or fellow or distinguished engineer, your knowledge of how the system works rapidly becomes outdated. And that's constantly changing as well. Another bias and another interesting thing as we interact with these complex systems is the tools we use are often a reflection of the jobs we're trying to do in our understanding of the system in the first place. Let's consider Conway's Law. And Conway's Law, in brief, gets this idea that the things you build are inherently a reflection of your organizational structure. The way we interact and understand the system is often a reflection of the jobs we're trying to do and where we are in the organizational structure. If you're a database engineer or a network engineer, you're always going to be biased towards using those tools to understand the system in the first place. It turns out we have a really nice way to describe the situation with complex systems. It's called Wood's Theorem after Dr. David Woods from Ohio State University who studies cognitive systems and how we interact with them. It describes this really interesting situation where as the complexity of a system increases, the accuracy of how well we understand that system is constantly decreasing. So we're stuck in a situation where we're building more complicated things, but the accuracy or how well we understand what's actually going on is always getting worse. This isn't really an ideal situation to be in as we're building these more complicated things, especially on the bleeding edge of technology. We see Wood's theorem at play all too often with major incidents, the really bad things that happen and wake you up at 2 a.m. With major incidents, we know that they're all too often surprises. They reveal some sort of working or some condition in the system that you had no idea was even possible. We discover that a system works in an unexpected way all too often at the worst possible moment, when something's on fire and you have to fix it and customers are affected. One story from personal experience is a simple database query that after being deployed for a few weeks and nothing happened, ended up nearly taking down the entire site between 2 and 3 a.m. in the morning, in the process, of course, waking me up. And the interesting thing about this incident isn't necessarily that I wrote bad code, that happens. It was that the outage was so severe because it was a combination of three different things that all had to happen at the same time or to cascade into a major failure. Certainly, there was bad code, there was a slow query, there was also a misconfiguration of a web server and a safety check that was turned off in the database. It was the combination of all those three things that was caused by a single customer pressing a single button on a mobile app that ultimately cascaded into a severe and nearly total site outage. With complex systems, it's often some weird combination of different states and configurations and code changes that in combination create an entirely expected result that can cause really bad things to happen. In this sense, planning for failure or covering every single different combination of scenarios and switches becomes really hard to plan for. We'll talk more about how to plan for the unexpected in the next episode. Thanks for joining and see you next time.